mysterious creature found in a rock back in the 1800s, still yet to be identified, a newly discovered dinosaur, and the bones of a previously unknown archaic species of human. These are mysterious fossils that didn't match any known species. In Illinois, there's a place called Mazon Creek, which is home to some very odd fossils. People first started finding them during coal mining back in the 1800s, but it wasn't until the 50s that one fossil really caught some attention. A paleontologist named Francis Tully found this strange, soft-bodied creature locked inside something called a mineral nodule, which is basically a small rock that forms around an object almost like a fossil. This creature later named Tullamonstrum gregarium, or Tully's monster, had a long snout with pincers, eyes on stalks, a segmented body, and a finned tail. A very strange looking creature. It was only a few inches long and probably lived in shallow tropical seas, but till this day no one has been able to figure out what this thing actually is, or rather was. Even though there are lots of these fossils, it doesn't match anything else that we know, either from the past or present. Over 60 years of research and scientists still don't know for sure, and what I mean by that is they just can't place the thing in any particular category. Some believe it could be a relative of squids, but nobody can say for sure. The Denisovans were an archaic species of human that we didn't even know existed until just over a decade ago. The first clue came in 2008, when a finger bone was found in Denisova Cave in Siberia. In 2010, scientists managed to extract DNA from it, and it turned out to belong to a totally new species species, now called the Denisovans. These humans lived around 300,000 to 50,000 years ago, at the same time as Neanderthals and early modern humans. They only had a few bones and teeth to go on, but researchers have been able to analyze their DNA, and they've found some interesting things. Turns out, Denisovans didn't just coexist with Neanderthals, they interbred with them. In the same cave where the Denisovan bones were found, they also discovered the remains of a creature that wasn't fully Neanderthal or fully Denisovan. This was a first generation hybrid between the two, which scientists named Denny. Denny is the first known direct offspring from two different species of early human, and to this day, no one's found anything like it. Well, that is until this next discovery, but it is slightly different. Just in 2024, scientists named a new human species Homo juliensis, which roughly translates to big head people. The new species was identified from fossils found in China that have a mix of traits from Neanderthals, modern humans, and Denisovans. It's based on skulls from around 220,000 to 100,000 thousand years ago, found at sites in northern and central China. The skulls of this species are large and wide, with thick bones similar to Neanderthals, but they also have some similarities to modern humans. Researchers Christopher Bay and Xu Ji Wu, who led the study, said that the increasing number of fossils in East Asia means that we need new categories for these ancient humans. Just generally calling these fossils archaic homo isn't specific enough. These early humans probably weren't isolated, and Bay and Wu think they could have been the result of interbreeding between different early species, including Neanderthals, which supports the idea that interbreeding was a huge part of human evolution. Homo Julius isn't widely accepted yet, but a lot of experts are starting to warm up to the idea. As paleontologist John Hawkes put it, naming new species helps us better communicate about ancient human evolution. And in this case, the name could help clear up some of the confusion surrounding fossils from this part of the world. In 2021, scientists announced the discovery of a totally new dinosaur species found in Greenland, which they named Isi Senek. This creature would have lived around 240 14 million years ago, during the late Triassic period. Now, these fossils were actually discovered back in 1994, but at that time they thought it was a Latiosaurus. But after a closer look, researchers realized these bones were something else entirely. A study led by Victor Bakari used advanced scans to get a better idea of what the skulls really looked like. Turns out, this thing was different from anything seen in other species. According to Bakari, the proportions of the bones were a dead giveaway that these skulls came from from a new, previously unknown species. You see, Senek wasn't a massive beast like some of the more well-known dinosaurs. It was a medium-sized, two-legged herbivore with a long neck. In 1994, scientists got called in to check out a strange skeleton that had been uncovered on Santa Rosa Island in California. Turns out they found a nearly complete 
pygmy mammoth, which was a tiny version of the mammoth that lived on the Channel Islands during the late Pleistocene. These mammoths were way smaller than the giant mammoths that we usually think of. They only stood about five to maybe six feet tall, sometimes smaller, so not nearly as intimidating as their larger relatives. They managed to recover about 90% of the skeleton, pretty rare for fossil finds. The only parts missing were a foot, a tusk, and a couple of vertebrae. Now, why are these mammoths smaller? Well, they lived on a small island, and because of a phenomenon called island dwarfism, where some animals on islands seem to grow smaller than creatures on the mainland, these mammoths developed to be way smaller over time. Mammoth remains had been found on the Channel Islands as far back as the 1800s, but this discovery was special because it was the first nearly complete specimen. And after this find, scientists started digging up even more mammoth remains on the island, but this one's still the most intact we've got. In January of 2024, a grad student named Kyle Atkins Weltman uncovered a brand new dinosaur species dubbed Eonophrin infernalis, aka the chicken from hell. This strange creature roamed Earth about 65 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. This hell chicken was a member of the Aviraptorosaur group, which means it had a beak, but this species was a lot smaller than its relatives. Similar dinosaurs could weigh up to 660 pounds, but these guys came in at just 170 pounds. Its ankle bones were especially weird. They were fused to the tibia. This could have made the dinosaur much better at running, allowing it to handle stress while moving quickly. It also lived around the same time as other dinosaurs that didn't survive the asteroid impact, but these hell chickens, they seem to have lived long after. As Weltman said, this group seemed to have maintained stability and diversity, whereas other groups suffered. My guess is they were omnivores and very versatile, switching food sources to survive. Plant that lived 47 million years ago in what is now Utah doesn't match anything that's alive today. It was first discovered in 1969. Scientists thought the plant was part of the ginseng family, but it turns out it's way more complicated than that. The plant which has since been named Othniel phyton elongatum, actually belongs to an extinct family. When the first fossils were dug up, researchers, including a paleontologist Harry McGinnity, put it in the same group as plants like ginseng and ivy because of the structure of its leaves. But then another set of fossils were found, and that's when things get a bit weirder. As Stephen Manchester from the Florida Museum of Natural History said, the fossil is rare and having the twig with attached fruits and leaves. Usually these parts are found separately. As Manchester and his team studied the new fossils, he realized that this one didn't match anything in the ginseng family or any modern plants for that matter. The plant's stamens, which usually fall off when the fruit matures, were still attached. Despite more research, they couldn't find anything like it in the fossil record, so they gave it the overly complicated sciencey name, which translates to elongated alien plant. The Peking Man is one of the most famous and mysterious fossil discoveries ever. Found in the 1920s near Beijing, these fossils are thought to belong to a subspecies of Homo erectus, but there's still a lot we don't understand about them. What's strange is that the fossils show a mix of traits that don't quite fit anywhere. Some scientists think that the Peking men could have been an early version of modern humans, but others aren't so sure. The bones show signs of brain development that were more advanced than earlier hominins, but not quite as advanced as fully modern humans. And it doesn't help that the fossils disappeared during World War II when the site was being excavated. They've searched for the bones for years, but they've never been recovered. All we have now are photos and casts. So what exactly was Peking Man? Was it a direct ancestor of modern humans or some sort of offshoot? We still don't know for sure. A recent discovery in Spain is shaking up what we know about Neanderthals. In the Prado Vargas cave in Burgos, researchers found 15 small marine fossils, an odd place to find seashells. Seemed like they'd been brought there, but why? Well, according to scientists from the University of Burgos and the University of Malaga, these fossils may have been collected just for the sake of collecting. As they put it, the fossils, with one exception, show no evidence of having been used as tools. Thus, their presence in the cave could be attributed to collecting activities." End quote. This is pretty cool, because it means Neanderthals may have been capable of more abstract thought, something we typically associate with modern humans. The researchers think the fossils could have been used for 
anything from decoration to bartering. It's, it's possible they were even toys for children. What's key here is that there's no evidence of our direct ancestors being in the area at the same time. So this means Neanderthals were developing this behavior all on their own. The idea of collecting stuff for a lack of a better word, fun, may have been a lot older than we thought, possibly dating back 39 to 54,000 years ago. As the researchers put it, these fossils can be understood as evidence of an artistic interest or an attraction or curiosity for the forms of nature." End quote. Just more proof that the Neanderthals were likely a lot more complex than we usually give them credit for. In a new study published in Communications Biology, paleontologist Pedro Macho and his team have revealed a brand new species of sauropod dinosaur called Quanxara pintiquini estra, found in Cuenca, Spain. This creature lived about 75 million years ago during the late Cretaceous, and it's one of the most complete sauropod skeletons ever found in Europe. The fossils were discovered during construction work for a high-speed train project, and Mako explains that the animal is part of a sauropod group with a name that I just can't even begin to pronounce, it was common in the Northern Hemisphere. The fossils show the creature had some distinct characteristics, especially in its tail vertebrae. And what's even cooler is that this may not be it. The site's preserved more sauropod skeletons, some may be new species which haven't been identified yet. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.